the biggest ever 3D map of the Milky Way galaxy ever. Two billion stars and two billion motions. Game over. Thank you for your service, Gaia. On the 27th of March, 2025, the European Space Agency, ESA, switched off the Gaia Space Telescope for good. But even though the spacecraft's operations are now over, the scientific exploitation of Gaia's data has only just begun. Hey, Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, let's talk about ESA's golden child, Gaia, and why they shut it down. The Gaia Space Observatory was designed to create the ultimate 3D map of the Milky Way by making extraordinarily precise measurements of three key things. Firstly is position. Gaia measured the exact location of nearly 2 billion stars with unprecedented accuracy. But that's just only 1% of our entire galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy is estimated to contain between 100 billion and 400 billion stars. Being in space gave Gaia a major advantage, as it was able to avoid the blurring effects of Earth's atmosphere. To measure distance, Gaia used a technique called parallax. As Gaia orbited the sun, it viewed stars from slightly different angles. Nearby stars would appear to shift against the backdrop of more distant ones. This is an effect known as parallax. By measuring this tiny shift over several years, Gaia was able to calculate the distance to stars with stunning precision. The smaller the shift was, the further away the star was. Gaia's measurements are so accurate, they're like comparable to spotting a coin on the moon from the Earth. But Gaia didn't just stop at distances, it also tracked how stars move. Over its mission, Gaia observed each star around 70 times, and this allowed it to record the proper motion, the subtle drift of stars across the sky over time. The result? We now have an unprecedented view of how our galaxy is shifting and evolving over time. In other words, we're able to make a time-lapse movie that can be run forwards to see what happens in the future, or run backwards to reveal how the galaxy was assembled in the past. To do this, Gaia actually has two telescopes on board. They point in directions separated by a fixed large angle of 106.5 degrees. And this is because by observing two widely separated fields simultaneously, you can create a rigid reference frame across the entire sky. And this is essential for high accuracy measurements. From the Earth's Sun L2 point, where you'll also find JWST and Euclid, the Gaia spacecraft rotated slowly, continuously scanning the entire sky. This, combined with the slow precession of the spin axis, ensured that it covered the entire celestial sphere multiple times from different angles. Time has absolutely flown by since its launch in 2013. Gaia was the successor to the Hipparchos satellite, which mapped only 100,000 stars in comparison. In the first 22 months of data, Gaia discovered that instead of forming alone, our galaxy, the Milky Way, actually merged with another large galaxy, often called Gaia Enceladus or Gaia Sausage, about 10 billion years ago. The evidence, while well, Gaia's data showed that not all stars within our Milky Way move in the same way. When astronomers looked at those motions, the velocities of the stars, they noticed something surprising. There were two distinct groups. Some stars moved in the expected circular orbit around the galaxy, but others plunged radially towards and away from the galactic center. Even more strange was that some of these stars moved against the rotation of the Milky Way's disk, a clue that they didn't belong to our galaxy originally, and there were also chemical fingerprints. These stars would have different chemical compositions compared to our native Milky Way stars. They were older and metal poor, typical of smaller ancient galaxies. 
This discovery reshaped our understanding of the Milky Way's formation. Instead of growing solely by steady star formation, our galaxy had a dramatic early history of galactic cannibalism. It absorbed this large satellite galaxy. But even though Gaia's primary mission was to map the Milky Way, it didn't just stop at the stars. In the process, Gaia also uncovered a vast array of other celestial objects, from asteroids in our solar system to quasars right at the edge of our observable universe. Gaia tracked the orbits of over 150,000 asteroids with pinpoint precision. Its high-quality measurements even revealed the potential presence of moons around hundreds of these asteroids. Beyond our galaxy, Gaia took on a whole new challenge, mapping distant quasars, the bright active centers of galaxies that are powered by supermassive black holes. Gaia created the largest 3D map of about 1.3 million quasars. Some of these quasars are so far away that their light began its journey when the universe was just 1.5 billion years old. Gaia also made a stunning discovery right in our neighborhood, a new breed of black hole. One of these, located in the constellation Aquila, has a mass nearly 33 times that of our sun. It's the largest stellar origin black hole ever found within our Milky Way, and it lies just 2,000 light years from Earth. Now, this discovery challenges previous assumptions about black hole formation, and it hints that our galaxy might be teeming with massive black holes that have so far remained hidden. Now, that's just some of the many amazing things that we have seen from Gaia. Gaia was ESA's golden child. It's considered ESA's most successful mission in terms of scientific output because its data was being used in roughly five astronomical journal articles published every single day. After operating for over 11 years, well beyond its planned five-year mission timeline, Gaia ran out of the gas propellant it needed for the spacecraft's thrusters to maintain its precise orientation and to continue scanning across the sky. Without the ability to make the fine adjustments, it could no longer perform its scientific observations. And so for this reason, Gaia was put into retirement. Now, a key part of this was disabling all the backup systems and layers of redundancy that was typically used to protect Gaia during its mission. And this ensured that the spacecraft wouldn't accidentally reactivate itself later if sunlight hit its solar panels, for example. The team overwrote all of the backup software with names of about 1,500 people who worked on this mission and even included some personal farewell messages in the spacecraft's memory. And then with the last of its fuel, the spacecraft pushed itself out of L2 into a stable long-term orbit around the sun. This was specifically chosen to be far, far away from Earth to minimize the chances that Gaia would come within 10 million kilometers of the Earth, at least for the next 100 years. This would prevent collision risks or interference with current or future missions operating near the Earth or near L2. Now, although the spacecraft is now silent, the scientific exploitation of its massive data set has really only just begun and it will continue for decades. There are still two major data releases planned, so you may still hear scientific news from it. But anyway, that is all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe. Hey, space cats, fly with me to the stars Faster than light, soaring past Mars Unveiling the cosmos, new worlds to explore